Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Good evening, teacher. How are you today? Hello, good evening. Hi, Edgar, how are you? Hi, teacher. Fine, and you? I'm doing fine, thank you. A little bit, uh, buenas noches, seré oyente, gracias. De Sandra Benítez para todos, okay. Thank you, Sandra. All right, uh, how are you today, Dennis? How was your weekend? Hi, Hi. teacher. Hi, Wilfredo. Hello, Mr. Machuca, how are you? I'm doing fine, thank you for asking. What's your day, teacher? Oh, my day was great. Yes, uh, we have a great day today at uh, school. Uh, we started uh, a new activity at the workplace. So it was it was it was fun. Emerson. Good, good teacher. Okay, Emerson, say hi to everybody. And uh, Jorge, why are you so serious today? Porque estás tan serio, Jorge? What happened? I'm fine, teacher. Only so tired. Oh, you're tired. Okay. Monday? It's just Monday. Yeah, it's because become the near the temporary uh, the holidays. Oh, the high um, season. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Okay. Well, we hope uh, everything comes together for you and, and you will have fun. <laughs> Hi, Esmeralda. How are you? Hi, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, nice to see you. Thank you. All right. How was your weekend? Um, mm. I'm sick. Oh, you're sick. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, stress and migrañas. Okay. Horrible. Migraines. Migraines. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. You're too young to suffer those type of uh, uh, inconvenience. I know, teacher. <laughs> Mucho trabajo. <laughs> Mucho trabajo y poco dinero. ¿eh? Sí. Yeah. Abunde no. trabajo más en esta fecha. Para mi profesión en esta fecha es una locura. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. Yes, I can, I can. Hoy fue mi último día con los niños y como ay, ay, nostalgia ay. y todo, sí, pero. Oh, por eso es que sí. <laughs> Emotionally was sí. for you, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. I'm I, crying. Uh, yes, I, I know, I know you cried, yes. yes. Mm. Okay, but everything is going to be okay. Everything is going to be all right. They're going to be okay without you, and you're going to be okay without them. Next year, you're going to have them again. So everything is, everything is fine. Okay, okay, very good. Excellent. All right, uh, let's, uh, let's start talking about uh, the new chapter. We're going to start the new chapter today. And by the way, uh, some of you have not uh, finished the uh, second, uh, the second week uh, uh, platform. So we need to be update. Uh, we need to be on top of the uh, uh, exercises because at the end, it's, you know, it's going to be too hard for you to finish all of it. So it's better for you to keep uh, start working week by week and finish uh, what you have to do during the week. If you don't know how to do it, just uh, uh, send a message to our website, uh, to our uh, WhatsApp uh, uh, group. I will be more than glad to help you, okay? So if you have the time, we can do it together if you, if you need to, okay? Um, okay, today we are going to be talking about uh, moral uh, verbs and how the, we can use them to make uh, requests, okay? And um, I'm going to ask you, do you have any idea what a moral verb is? Any of you? To modify the, the verb. Okay, it's a verb that modifies uh, another verb, right? Yeah, basically that's uh, it's, uh, what uh, 
a modal verb is uh, it is it is used to modify another verb and uh, uh this is a uh, week number three so we are going to start the unit three in the unit three this is the competences uh, that we need to acquire in this uh, unit uh, so students will be able to so in other words you will be able to make polite requests at the workplace and also we will react to appropriate and inappropriate behavior at work and third, you're going to be writing a short and professional emails to co-workers. And uh, last but not least, you are going to provide a written and oral instructions on etiquette at the workplace. We will see what an etiquette is. Uh, so before you write that, but that's going to be at the end of, of the week that you're going to um, you're going to write that. OK, so let's. Uh, Let's see just a second. So we're going to start. Uh, okay. Just a second. Can you see the board? No. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Not yet? Yes, no, yeah. Uh, not yet. Now we can see it. Now we can see it. That would be the other response. Not yet. No, we, cannot, we can't see it, but now we can see it. Yes. So we can see the board, right? Okay, so we're gonna be uh, working on uses of uh, could you and uh, would you. Yeah, this is what we're gonna be uh, doing. We will uh, learn the uses of could you and would you. And the pronunciation, the pronunciation for this one is uh, you, you take away this one and you take away this one and you say could 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 yes and this, uh, please uh, uh, turn the the tele uh, the tv off and uh, in this one you will say would would yes so it's got the uses so you're gonna say <laughs> uh, uh, could could you and would you okay so this is the pronunciation for it, could and would. Uh, yeah, so I just delete it for you to know the right pronunciation. So could and would, could you and would you, All right? That would be the pronunciation. And now we're gonna be uh, talking about the uses of could, you and would you. We already know that uh, a modal verb is a, 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 a word that modifies the verb. That's what uh, um, Manfred says. Okay, so the uses of could and would in a difference between could and would. So we have uh, the three uses of it. One is when we use it as a past tense, past tense. And the other one, the second one is when we use it uh, to uh, relate to a possi possible uh, situation, okay? So related, related to a possible situation. This is the second use of it. In the third use, so we're gonna be learning, the, the third one is the different pro polite expressions for a polite, expressions so we use uh, the could and would for uh for in in three scenarios as a past tense related to a possible situations and a polite expressions 
those are the three uses of uh, uh, of uh, would and could, and we're gonna see them um, in a detailed uh, uh, format. In the use of them, we're gonna uh, be doing some exercises so we can learn the use of it and uh, where we're gonna be placing the the modal verb. Okay, so in the <laughs> the first one, we're gonna use a uh, could could for the past tense of can. So past tense could is um, is is the past tense. So past tense of uh, can. So that's could. Could is the past tense of can. So when we say uh, could, we refer to can in this situation, the first situation. Remember, three uses of it. Past tense related to a possible situation and, and polite expression. We're gonna be talking about when those modal verbs are used in, as a past tense, okay? And would, would is the past tense of will. Hmm. So could is the past tense of can and would is the past tense of will. Okay. So I can say I can, an example of this uses will be I can run a mile, uh, can run a mile in, uh, let's say, uh, uh, 15 minutes, minutes. Okay, that is an ability, right? I have the ability to run uh, a mile within 15 minutes. Now we're gonna use uh, the past tense of can. What is the past tense of can? Good. Good, Good. yes. So Good. I say, I could run a mile in 15 minutes. Yes, but since it is the past that I wanna talk about, when, when I was, what? Uh, when I was uh, when I was a kid, yeah. When I was a kid, I could run a mile in fifteen minutes when I was a kid, yeah. So that is a, a possibility. The ability I had the ability, I I had the ability before, but not anymore. That's what I'm saying over here. I can run a mile in fifteen minutes. I have the ability to uh, run a mile in fifteen minutes. But when I use the uh, the could, making reference to the past tense, then I say I could run a mile in fifteen minutes when I was a kid. Yes. Okay. So now let's let's try with would. Yeah, the past tense of will. Yeah, I know. I know. I know we will we will be uh, bilinguals 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 after after this English course. Yes, after this English course. Well, I know we will be bilinguals after this English course. Now, how can how can we make this will in the past tense? Yeah. Sure. Yes. Eh, digamos, el primero, el primer ejemplo traducido sería como. Yo pude correr una milla en 15 minutos. No, yo podía. Ah, yo podía. Sí, yo podía. 
Yes. Yo podía correr una mía en 15 minutos. Cuando era pequeño, cuando era un niño. Y uh, el presente sería, yo puedo correr una mía en 15 minutos. Vale, porque tú vas ¿Mm? Perdón. Queremos apagar el televisor, por favor. Gracias. Thank you. Okay, now I know we will be bilinguals after this English course. ¿Cómo lo podemos hacer este pasado? Lo, lo voy a hacer en pasado. I knew. Como es en past tense, I have to say I knew. Yes, I knew we would okay, be. Yes, we would be bilinguals. Y el resto, ¿verdad? Bilinguals after this English course. Yeah. Okay, that will be the past tense. Using the will in the past tense, uh, would and can, and the past tense will be could. That is one use of the modal verb as a, a, as a verb in the past. Yes, will, would, and can, could. Okay, eso lo estamos usando como en pasado. Ese es el primer use que tenemos aquí, ¿verdad? El primer use es as a past tense, ¿ya? Yeah. Okay, vamos a ver el segundo, the second use of it, as a possible situation. If you have any question, please stop me. Si, si tiene alguna pregunta, por favor, eh, hágamela. No deje que siga eh, explicando, ¿ok? Eso tiene que quedar bien claro, porque at the end, vamos a hacer un, un little quiz donde usted va, uh, va a contestar las preguntas que yo le voy a poner y va a escoger si es el would o es el could el que va a usar después de esta aplicación que yo le estoy dando. ¿ya? So the second use is related to a possible situation. Yes. Yeah. And, and an imaginary imaginary Ma im imaginary, imaginary, yeah. imaginary situation. This is the second use of would and could related to a possible situation and an imaginary situation. Yeah. So, vamos a ver un possible situation. If I said I, um, it could rain. So we look at the sky and we say, okay, it could rain tonight. Yeah, it could, huh? it could rain tonight. Yes. Podría llover en la noche, ¿verdad? It could rain tonight. See, is this a possible situation? Now we can use uh, um, a, Another one we can say um, Wilfredo. We were call, we were calling Wilfredo, yeah, and uh, Wilfredo never answered the phone. Yeah, okay. Vamos a ver. Wilfredo, Wilfredo, Wilfredo isn't isn't answering. Yeah, his his phone. Yeah. Wilfredo isn't answering his phone. Ahora vamos a poner una, una, una situación uh, eh, posible, possible situation. Yeah? ¿Qué podrá pasar? Eh, eh, no signal. No signal. Ok, yeah, podría ser eso, ¿verdad? Yeah. Pero cuando no hay señal, ¿qué nos dice el teléfono? Sí. Ocupado o algo, ¿verdad? Entonces, ¿qué podría ser? O posiblemente él está ocupado. Yes, él está ocupado. So, no signo. No signo. Podría ser una possible situation. O that he could be busy. Yeah. He could be busy. Yeah. 
Yeah. Entonces, Wilfredo isn't answering his phone. No signal, probably. O he could be busy. Yeah. Entonces, esa es una possible situation. Yeah. We use a could. Ya no estamos, en este caso, no estamos usando como un past tense, fíjese. Sino que solo una possible situation. Podría ser que él esté, yes. Podría ser que él esté ocupado, ocupadísimo. Yeah. So, yes. Uh, Esmeralda is not uh, answering or is not responding when I ask her for uh, her opinion. Yeah, he could be um, busy. She could be uh, talking to someone. She could be uh, any possible situation. Yeah. So we can use it as a possible situation. Now we're gonna use it as imaginary situation. What do we use uh, as an imaginary situation? We gonna be using would because could cannot be used as a, uh, to indicate an imaginary situation, okay? So if, if I, if I, um, if I had, because it's the past, right? If I had uh, $2 million to, million dollars if i had two million dollars ya eso ya es imaginación verdad tal vez el teacher no ha comido por <laughs> pero está hablando así if i had two million dollars es ya empezamos con imaginary situation i i would i would say i would i would buy yeah i would buy a uh, what me gustaría tener una, una casa en la, en, la, en la playa. I would buy a house. Yeah, a house. ¿Dónde? I would buy a beach house. Vamos a ponerme. A beach house. Yeah. Ok. If I had two million dollars, I would buy a beach house. Oh, I can say I would buy... Uh, I will buy me uh, an helic helicopter. I will buy me a jet. Yes. I will buy me a, 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 a no sé, son tantas cosas imaginarias. Okay. I will buy me a, a, a 60 inches of TV, the size of my wall. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So this is imaginary. Yeah. Yes. O podemos decir, vamos a ver, vamos a ver, vamos a, a agarrar Esmeralda. Esmeralda, I, um, y Esmeralda, Esmeralda, work, work, yes, worked, worked, hard. O oh, vamos a poner una, una condición, if Esmeralda work hard, if Esmeralda Worked hard, yes, yes. Ya estamos uh, inventando, ¿verdad? Esmeralda, porque ella no va a trabajar duro, ya es de vacaciones. If Esmeralda worked, no, todavía no. <laughs> okay, if Esmeralda worked hard, she, vamos a poner she, would, yes, she would get a promotion. Promotion, yes. She will get a promotion. Ya sabemos que es algo imaginario, ¿verdad? Imaginary. ¿Por qué? Porque even though if she does work hard, it's not going to happen. She will not get a promotion. Yes. Because yeah, people say, no, no. If I give her a promotion, I'm going to have to pay her more. So I'm not going to give her a promotion. Yeah. So eso es una imaginary situation. Yes. If Esmeralda worked hard, she would get a promotion. So we're telling that, we're saying that uh, it's something imaginary. So look at the structure over here. We're using the past tense, the simple past over here. And over here, we're using would, yeah? And this is the simple past and this is would. It, it looks like a, it's a second conditional, right? The second conditional looks like it is the second condition. So if I had $2 million, I would buy a beach house. 
If Esmeralda worked hard, she would get a promotion. So that is the second use of would and could. Now let's uh, take a look into the three option of using would and could. And we're gonna be using as a polite expressions. When we're making uh, polite expressions, yeah. There are four functions polite expressions, okay? We're gonna say that there are four functions, functions. We're gonna be talking about four functions when, when we're using would as a polite expressions, yeah, four functions um, that we use them for. The first one is when we make a suggestion, make suggestions. It's the first use, it's the first function when we use would and, and could as a polite expression. The first one is uh, we use it to make suggestion or to make request. We use it to make request as well or to make an offer. Permission. Yes, permission. And permission. Yes, and asking for permission and asking for Permission, yes, permission. Yes, those are the four functions that we're gonna um, learn over here. Can I delete this one? Can I erase this? Yes, yes. yeah. Thank you. Okay, it's so okay. thank you, sir. So these are the uh, four functions that we're gonna uh, take a look into it, into would and could when we use, when we are using them as a polite expression. So let's start with the, uh, um, with, let's start with uh, try with with can, okay? So uh, in uh, in Oloquinta, they're selling uh, the uh, the pupusa loca, right? The crazy pupusa. Have you tried yet, uh, uh, Dennis? Uh, yes, teacher. Okay. Pero... Okay. <laughs> Pero ahí no hay un estándar, ahí al final lo que cae hasta, hasta de chucho, dije que venden ahí. <laughs> oh my goodness. I just, I just went last week in, over there and uh, yes, uh, it was, I, I, well, I had a bad experience uh, at one of the, those little restaurants over there. So uh, I didn't want to go back again. It was a bad experience uh, eating pupusa, but uh, let's let's uh, let's pretend that uh, we we uh, we never been into that place and we we had never tried the uh, the pupusa loca and uh, we're gonna make a, like a suggestion, right? Uh, we are making plans to go out uh, for dinner and uh, we're gonna suggest to try the new uh, pupusa loca at the, um, at the, uh, uh, at the Oloquilta place, okay? So we're gonna say we can try. So we, we could, because we're using could, right? We could try, yeah, we can try that uh, new uh, pupusa loca, loca, in Oloquilta. Oloquilta. Yes. Oloquilta. Okay. Hey, we could try that uh, new pupusa loca in Oloquilta. Sí. Eso no se oye como una, como una offer, ¿verdad? Ni asking for permission. No sé. Ni tampoco se, se oye como un request. Yeah. So it sounds like a, hey, a suggestion. Yeah. Porque estamos como cinco personas y cada uno dice, hey, let's try this, let's try this. We could try this. Oh, we could try this. We could try uh, uh, the new uh, uh, the pizza, uh, pizza hut. You know, they say that it has uh, uh, pepperonis, it has a uh, 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 bell pepper, it has uh, a, a jalapenos in it uh, and it's very hot. So we could try that. Or we could try the new pupusa loca, whatever you guys decided to. We're ready for it, yeah? So 
we could try, lo estamos usando como que, como una suggestion, making suggestion, ¿cierto? ¿Ah? Sí, una, una pregunta, veo que el verbo it no, no, no se pone cuando después de which we could try it. Uh -huh. No, we could try, podemos probar la nueva pupusa loca. Yeah. We could try the, the new pupusa loca. Podemos probar la nueva pupusa loca, sí. Es Ajá, una suggestion. Ver, no, eso no, no se pone verbo. No porque no estamos sugiriendo comerla, sino que try it. Ese es el verbo try. Sí, el verbo está aquí, el try. Sí, 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 tarde, pero... ah, pues, es, es, por eso le pregunto, porque, o sea, yo sé que ese es verbo, pero, uh -huh. o sea, intentar qué? Comerla, tirarla. O sea, por eso le digo, no es específico ponerle el verbo it después de try. No, uh, eh, en todo caso, um, uh, cuando se dice comer así, por ejemplo, se usa el verbo to have. Yeah. Uh, uh, por ejemplo, dice I would uh, like to, to have a, a hamburger. Yeah, hamburger. Yeah. Y en inglés decimos así, I would like to have a hamburger. No decimos, uh, me gustaría comerme una hamburguesa, ¿sí? Y esto, sí, y quiere decir, eh, quiero comer una hamburguesa, ¿ya? Yeah. Pero usamos el verbo to have. I would like to have a hamburger. Por ejemplo, decimos, uh, what time? What time do you have breakfast? Yeah. See, what time do you have breakfast? Yeah. No, decimos what time do you eat breakfast? Sino que ponemos el verbo eh, have breakfast. Yeah. Esa son, son ocasiones donde no literalmente lo, lo vamos uh, uh, traduciendo. Entonces el verbo to eat uh, no lo usamos en esos casos. Yeah. Usamos ese verbo. Y en este caso, que es try, deberíamos de probar, ¿verdad? La nueva pupusa, ¿sí? Debemos de probar la nueva pupusa. O deberíamos de probar la nueva pizza. ¿sí? Eso es lo que quiere decir ahí más o menos. ¿sí? Ajá, ajá. Por, eso, por eso es que más o menos me queda duda. ¿Por qué no se pone el lit? O sea, como que se elimina, pero sí, se supone que se va a comer. Pero también el, el verbo try es de intento, no es de, de degustación. Por eso es que... Me entra ahí la... Sí, la, es, la... Es, es, sí es que en el inglés lo, se, se, con, uh, se considera que es una como redundancy. Sí, hay mucha redundancy en, en inglés, pero cuando dice uh, we could try the new pupusa, uh, por ejemplo, si yo le ponemos, si le ponemos aquí, we could eat the new pupusa loca y no lo cuenta. Yeah. Yeah, we could eat. Podríamos comer. Yeah. Esa nueva pupusa loca en los cuentos, ¿ya? Pero no se ve, no se ve bien, ¿ya? Aunque se, eh, gramaticalmente eh, no, no está bien eh, escrito. Sería, we could try, para decir, porque no, no la vamos a comer, no la tenemos, sino que vamos a, eh, es una sugerencia solamente, ¿ya? Sí, por eso es que se ah, me... eh, eh, Por Grama eso, como... Gra la... Gramaticalmente, y tampoco una teoría escucharía bien uh -huh. por, lo, por lo mismo que fue es la, la redundancia sí uh -huh. eh, el try es, es igual se entiende que es para probar intentar hacer algo ahí va a depender del, del contexto sí del contexto correcto sí es, es más ah, mi internet estaba mal este una pregunta pero el try lo podemos cambiar por it por el sí. verbo it sí es es como Vea, es, es el ejemplo que le di. Um, I would eat a, a hamburger. Yeah. Usted lo podía escribir así. I will eat a hamburger. Yes. Eh, pero cuando nosotros hablamos de eh, ¿qué, es lo que, qué es lo que vas a, a comer, ¿sí? En inglés no decimos I will eat a hamburger, sino que decimos I will have. Yeah. Y eso se entiende en inglés que es eh, comer una hamburguesa. 
Sí. Porque cuando dice I will eat, ¿qué va a comer? La hamburguesa. La hamburguesa se come. Sí. Entonces, eh, esa redundancia es eh, por eso que se usa el verbo to have. Yeah. Para no tener esa redundancia. Y en este caso, tried, the new pupusa, eh, sí, sí. Le ponemos eat, la pupusa es, se come, ¿verdad? Entonces, uh, por eso es que usamos el verbo try. Pero usted puede usar el verbo to eat, ya, yeah, no, no hay problema. Gramaticalmente no va a estar bien, pero sí, o sea, sí lo puede usar. ¿verdad? Sí, ajá. Bueno, en el inglés sería así, porque, o sea, porque en español, porque ni intentamos comer esa nueva pupusa, porque no probamos esa pupusa, uh -huh. pero probamos es muy diferente al probar de, o sea, por el acento, normalmente, pues. Uh -huh. eh, yeah. eh, eh, por eso ahí, como uno nativo latino, pues, uh -huh. y al ver eso, como que ahí, pero eso, ¿Sí? uh -huh. así como latino, lo, lo podemos decir de que, hey, no, eso está incorrecto gramaticalmente en latino, pero para el americano, Sí está correcto, como usted menciona, pues sería una, una redundancia. Uh, ajá, porque nosotros, bueno, al menos mi persona, eh, el try, have, o sea, también son como tipo verbo, pues, uh -huh. de, de, de hacer. Sí por, ejemplo, de hacer. sí, por ejemplo, si yo le digo, mira, esta, esta pupusa está deliciosa. Usted no diría, déjame probar comerla. ¿Cómo diría? Bueno, según lo que usted acaba de explicar, let me try. Let me try it. Yes. Usted diría, uh -huh. let, me, let me try it. Yeah. Yes. Right. No diría, let me try it, uh, eat, eat it. Let me try eat it. ¿Por qué? Porque ya, ya sabemos que cuando dice, let me try it, está diciendo que va a comerla. Pues. Ese es, ese es, uh, la forma como, como de, decimos en inglés. Ajá, sí, este, porque sí, la primera, sin, sin que usted me hubiera explicado, yo hubiera dicho, let me try it. O sea, eso. O let me take a, a piece. Let, let me take a bite. Yes. A bite, ajá. Yes. Una mordida o uh -huh. un pedazo. Uh -huh. Ajá. Ya. Yeah. Sí. Yeah. Uh -huh. Gracias, teacher. No, no hay problema. Y esto es cuando estamos haciendo suggestion, ¿verdad? Uh, lo estamos viendo desde el punto de vista de sugerencia, de, de, de suggestion. Mm. So we could try the, the new Italian uh, uh, um, yeah, restaurant, we could try the new Mexican restaurant, we could try the, o cualquier cosa, ¿verdad? Pero es uh, try it, um, eh, la comida ahí. En este caso, we could try it, la comida del nuevo restaurante, como que ya yeah, es una redundancia ahí, ahí sale una redundancia. Eh, comida, restaurante, ya. Yeah. Decimos, let's, let me try the new Italian restaurant. Let me try the new eh, 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 Chinese restaurant. Es una suggestion. Uh -huh. eh, vamos a verlo desde el punto de vista de un uh, uh, request uh, o, o, o an offer. Vamos a ver la, la forma como podríamos verlo como offer. Y en la, en la offer no podemos usar could, sino que usamos el would. Es el más, el más apropiado para usarlo, ¿ya? Yeah. Por ejemplo, would you, would you like, would you like some coffee? Some coffee. Yeah. Would you like some coffee? Eso sería un, como una offer, ¿verdad? Para hacer una, ofreciéndole algo. Esto lo usamos nosotros, uh, to make, to make an offer. Um, would you like some coffee? Yes. Would you like uh, uh, some tea? Would you like uh, uh, something for drink? Would you like to come to the party? Would you like is cuando queremos hacer una offer usamos el el modal verb would 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 you like some coffee? Yeah. La mayoría de veces para eso lo usamos nosotros para para offer, verdad? Y también lo para hacer request. To make a request, usamos el could. El could, ese cuando queremos hacer un request. Uh, por ejemplo, a uh, Esmeralda, could you open, could you open the door for me? Yeah. Yeah. Could you open the door for me? 
yes, making a request. Yeah, could you open the door for me? Yeah, could you open the door for me? It, making como un request. Yeah. Estoy pidiéndole a Esmeralda que abra la puerta. So, esa sería un request. Yeah. Y como dijo Manfredi, lo podemos usar como permission también. Yeah. Permission sería could, could you. Yeah. Permission, could you. O could I. Could I. Por ejemplo, si necesito dinero, como decía, could I borrow. Could I borrow? Yeah, could I borrow? Could I borrow? Yeah, could I borrow uh, ten dollars? Hmm. Ya todos van a empezar a pagar la cámara, verdad? Cuando digo, can I can I borrow ten dollars? Todo, oops, se fue. Eh, ya no tengo internet. <laughs> can, could I borrow ten dollars? Oh, sí. Uh, eh, Wilfredo, le vamos a decir que nos preste el carro para el fin de semana. Uh, Wilfredo, Will, Fredo, uh, could, uh, could we, could we borrow, could we borrow uh, your car uh, for a couple of days? Yeah, yeah. Eso sería como permission, ¿verdad? Lo estamos usando como permission, permission. Lo que dijo Man Freddy. And Wilfredo, could uh, we borrow your car for a couple of days? Yes. Lo estamos usando como permis permission. Y no, no podemos usar would. El would ahí. Yeah, porque would eh, se usa para otro tipo de polite request. Would you like a coffee? Offer. Would you like me to come to your house this weekend? I'm offering myself. So, hemos visto uh, a polite expression using could and would and for functions of could and would. Uh, make suggestion, request, offer something, and asking for permission. So, those are the four functions that we have seen um, using could and would as a polite expressions. ¿Alguna pregunta? ¿Estamos bien? Ok, vamos a, a probar si, si necesitamos dar más explicación. Ah, eh, aquí donde va esto, donde va esto, ya, va a ir la palabra que usted va a poner. You mind. Um, mm, Would you mind? Um, okay. You mind lending me some money? Uh, vamos a poner aquí Esmeralda. Esmeralda. Yeah. Esto sería acá. Esmeralda. Yeah. ¿Qué podríamos poner allí? And what what function is that? Ahora qué usaríamos ahí? Could or would? Would. Could. 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 No. Would. Would. Would, no. would, right? A would. So, it's a, it's a, it's a would, yes. Yeah, would. Would. As matter that, would you mind lending me some money? Yes. Yes. Would you like, uh, would you mind lending me some money? Okay. Now, now let me uh, make a, a I'm going to give you a sentence and you fill in the blanks, okay? Eh, vamos a ver. Um, Edgar 
escriba Edgar, Edgar, space, space es un espacio, ¿verdad? Edgar, space, already, already, speak three languages. When he was eight. When? When he was eight. Okay. Now, in the space, you're going to tell me what, uh, what a modal verb do you think is the correct one and why? Teacher, in that case, it tries of an ability. Ability? Is correct? It tries of an ability? No, no. Teacher, yes. sorry, repeat this sentence, please. Okay. We say Edgar, space, uh -huh. already, yeah. already, speak. Three languages when he was eight. Lo último no le escuché. When he was eight. Cuando él tenía ocho. No, when he was eight. No. Eight. Okay. What is the moral verb? Yes, and uh, is uh, uh, Wilfredo says a uh, possibility, right, Wilfredo? Cool. Yes, right. Okay. Good. So, good. And, okay, and what is the use of, of could? Are we using it as a modal verb? Or as a past tense of as the verb? Past, past yes, tense. Past, past past tense. tense of the verb. Yes, very good. Yes. So we're going to say that uh, Edgar could already speak uh, three languages when he was eight. Yeah. Okay, vamos a ver. Uh, Jorge isn't answering his phone. Jorge isn't as answering his phone. Period. He, space, be busy. Okay, uh, you say uh, Jorge isn't answering phone? Answering, yes. Jorge isn't answering his phone. Ah, his phone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. He, space, be busy. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody can read me? The sentence back. He could. He could. Busy. Yeah, he could be busy. Yes. Uh huh. So um, 
could be busy. So that is a possibility, right? Podía estar ocupado. Yeah. Okay, now space, space. I, mm -hmm. I use your laptop to send an email. Space, I use your laptop to send an email. It is a request, cool. teacher. Yes, uh -huh. a request. A request is good. Good, yes, good. Could I use your laptop to send an email? So that would be a permission. Estoy pidiéndole permiso a él. Huh? Could I use? Uh, could I use your laptop to send an email? That would be a permission. Okay. Now the the other one is uh, I became. If I became if I became a president or if I became president, comma, mm -hmm. I space make college education free for everybody. Can you repeat, please? Yes. If I became president, uh -huh. I mm -hmm. face okay. uh -huh. make college education free for everybody. Ah, free. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Mm -hmm. I, if, if I become president, I could, I could, uh, so is it real or not real? It's a possibility, possibility. <laughs> it's a imaginary. Imaginary, <laughs> so imaginary. So cuando estamos haciendo imaginary things, ¿cuál usamos? Mm -hmm. Wood. Wood. W. Uh, yes. Yes, oh. teacher. And we are using the conditional in the past tense. Yes. The condition. In that case, we should use would. Yes. Would. Yes. Uh huh. If I became president, so that's a past tense, imaginary things, I would make college education free for everybody. And that's an imaginary thing because if I be I become a president, uh, I will not think about other people. You know, I would say, oh, okay, now I'm gonna make myself rich. <laughs> yeah. So that's an imaginary thing. Um, okay. Now let's see. The other one was uh, um, space. It it be okay. If I took the day off on Wednesday, Wednesday is a holiday. <laughs> Space, it be okay if I took the day off on Wednesday. Can you repeat, please? Yes. Space. Uh -huh. It uh -huh. be okay if you you okay no it be be ah, okay okay be okay mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. I took mm -hmm. the day off the day off ah uh, the day off yes. On Wednesday, question mark. So what will be? It will be could or would?
We are using a similar structure, teacher. Yes. Uh -huh. I think. So, so would, be, would it be okay? Would it be okay? Would it be okay? It would be okay. Yeah. Would it be okay if I took the day off on Wednesday? Yeah. And last but not least, let's do a, a, a final uh, practice. Space, you like me to give you a ride home? Do you like me? You like me to you give like me. Mm -hmm. You like me to give you a ride home? Question mark. All right, home. Yes. Mm -hmm. Teacher, can you repeat, please? Yes. Space, you like me to give you a ride home. Uh... A permission. A permission. Mm -hmm. I'm asking. I'm asking that person to for something. Or am I offering myself? No offering. Offering. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cuando usted le dice a alguien, mira, eh, te gustaría que te llevara a tu casa. Yes. No le está pidiendo permiso, verdad? Está haciendo o no le está ofreciendo hacer mm -hmm. So. So what would be would be could or would? Would would you like would you like to give you a ride home? Yeah. Would would you would you like me to give you a ride home? Yeah. That would be the answer. Would you like me to give you a ride home? Yeah. That would be an offer. Ok, very good, very good. Si todos uh, pudieron contestar eso, estamos bien. Ok, si, si participaron en la, en la actividad y todo eso, estamos muy bien. Eh, si, si no lo entendió, si él estuvo confundido o confundido en algo, por favor, please let me know. Yeah. Hello, Edwin, how are you today? Hello, teacher. Eh, Edwin, no te quedó tiempo de trabajar en la plataforma. Uh, no, 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 el hecho que estuve un poco ocupado el fin de semana, ahora, de eso, ahora voy a continuar. Ok, excelente, ok, very good. Sí. All right. Okay. Yo ahorita acabo de trabajar la, de la plataforma, teacher, porque no pude, este, pero fíjese que me he topado con una situación en la, en la tarea 12. Uh -huh. Y en la, en la segunda oración, uh -huh. eh, pues pa, para mí la respuesta está incorrecta. Ok. Porque eh, ahí dice, tú no deberías de cruzar la calle con la luz roja. Y así sí dice, se debe de cruzar así. la calle. ¿En español está la oración? No, está en inglés, pero o sea, la traducción dice... No deberías de cruzar la calle con la luz roja. No, sí pero... se debe de cruzar la calle con la luz roja. No, es que tiene que leerla en inglés. En español no, porque en español se interpreta diferente. En inglés tiene que leerla. Y tratar de entenderla en inglés. ¿Y cómo dice en inglés? You space cross the street at red traffic lights. Ok. You mm -hmm. space cross the street at red traffic. Teacher. Entonces, yes. para... mm -hmm. 